Hey everybody and welcome back. This is our part four and our last part of a four-part series on confidence intervals, margins of errors, sample sizes, and so on. We just finished doing an example to figure out the smallest sample size needed to get a certain margin of error, and now we're going to move on to the next example. In this next example, we're going to look at how to find a sample mean and a sample standard deviation given a small set of data. Now I'm going to show you how to do this by hand, but I also want to remind everyone that most of the time we don't calculate sample standard deviations or even means by hand. Usually we'll type these values into either Excel, StatCrunch, SPSS, or whatever you want to use, and it can calculate the sample standard deviation for you. However, it's very important to understand the process of calculating this so you can see what's really going on. And that's what we're going to see here. And we're also going to see several other examples. So suppose this is my data set. What is the sample size that I have here? All right, well, this is a sample of some data that's out there. Maybe it's cholesterol levels, who knows? The sample size is the number of data points or the number of pieces of data that I have. In this case, my sample size is 14. Our sample size is always represented by the letter N. The next question is, what is the mean for this sample? To find the mean of any sample, you're going to add all the values together and then divide by the total number of values. The mean here is 242.7. I don't have that part written out because I'm assuming most people are comfortable with summing all the numbers together and dividing by 14. And that's how I came up with this mean or average for my sample. Now the next question we're going to look at a little bit more closely is what is the sample standard deviation? The sample standard deviation. And keep in mind that there are two different formulas for standard deviation. In fact, Excel also has two formulas for this as well, as do other applications. The sample standard deviation divides by an n minus 1, and that's how you can kind of tell them apart. A population standard deviation formula divides by n. So we're actually looking for the sample standard deviation. If you find that you keep getting the answer wrong when calculating the standard deviation, the problem may be that you need the sample standard deviation but are accidentally calculating the population standard deviation. They are different formulas. So here's, <clears throat> here's the basic formula for a sample standard deviation. First, and this formula actually has many steps, we want to take... An, Let's look at the inside first. It's always best to look at the inside of a formula so that it makes sense. We want to take each value of x. Each value of x is each value in our sample. And we want to subtract from each value in our sample the sample mean. So our first step is to individually subtract the sample mean from each one of these values. That's 14 different subtraction problems. After I do each subtraction, I'm actually going to square those values. Then, after I square all 14 of those values, which will give me 14 more values, I'm going to add them all together. I'm going to add them all together. Then, I'm going to divide that value by n minus 1. Then, I'm going to take the square root. So there are many, many steps here, and I'm going to show you all the steps written out. Okay, let's see them. Here's my data set in blue. This is my original data set. Here's the sample mean. Remember my first step in the formula is I want to subtract the sample mean from each of my data points. So that's what's going on here in this column. I took each sample mean and subtracted, I'm sorry, I took each x value in the data set and subtracted my sample mean from it. So x minus the mean gives me this value and this value and so on. I get 14 different values because I'm going to be subtracting the sample mean from each one of my data points. So that's step one. 
My next step in the formula was to square each of these values. That's what's going on here. So I take each of these values that I just created and I square it. That's now where all 14 of these values come from. And let's recall the formula again. The formula tells us first subtract the sample mean from each value of x. We did that. Then square each of those remaining values. We did that. The next thing is going to be to add those values all together. So let's see what that looks like. So again, here's all of our data set. Here's the sample mean. Here's the difference between each of our data sets and the sample mean. So 92 minus 242.7 is minus 150.7 and so on. Here's the square of each of those differences. Finally, I need to add all of these values together. When I add them all together, I get this big value here. Then I'm going to take this value and divide it by n minus 1 to get this value. And then my last step is to take the square root, which gives me my final solution of 115.6 approximately. So there are several steps in doing this by hand, but if you do each step, it's not difficult. Now, I can also do this in Excel if I want to. I can also do this in Excel. For example, here's the formula for Excel. Notice that it has a dot S for sample standard deviation. I typed my data into column A1 through A14, and I typed this in to a separate slot in Excel. If you're familiar with Excel, this formula will make sense to you. And of course, you can also use programs like StatCrunch. So this example works out how you can take any sample data set and literally go through each one of the steps to calculate the sample standard deviation by hand. Okay, so our sample standard deviation came out to be 115.6. Our sample mean is 242.7. Our sample size was 14. So that's what we know so far. All right. Now, let's go to the next example, which is kind of part of this problem. Using your calculated sample mean and your calculated sample standard deviation, what is the best estimate that you have for the population mean? Again, our best estimate for our population mean is always going to be our sample mean. It may not be a good estimate, but it's the best estimate that we have. If you think about it, we generally cannot take the full population parameter. So in general, our best estimate of any population is the sample. So the answer to that question, our best estimate for the population mean is the sample mean, 242.7 in this case. Next, what is the margin of error here? Calculate the margin of error for a 95% confidence interval. Again, these slides always are using a 95% confidence interval. That's just assumed. Okay, how do I do that? Same formula. I'm using means and standard deviation, so the formula is going to be 2 times the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of my sample size. So that's 2 times 115.6, that was my sample standard deviation that I calculated, divided by the square root of 14. 14 was my sample size. I take the square root of 14 first, get that out of the way. I multiply 2 times 115.6, and then I divide. And that gives me 61.8, which is my margin of error. Okay. Once I've calculated my margin of error, I can actually answer the question, what is the 95% confidence interval for the population mean? Remember, to get the final confidence interval, I both add and subtract my margin of error to my sample mean. So my sample mean plus my margin of error is 204.5. My sample mean minus my margin of error is 180.9. And so my 95% confidence interval around the population mean mu is between these two values. And I've rounded up, but again, you can determine the type of rounding you need to do based on your problem.
Let's look at one last example. This example is for sample proportions and sample statistics. Let's say in this particular case, you select a sample of 140 people that are attending a big chocolate conference. Now the entire conference is attended by 1,691 people. So that's the population of the conference. You're taking a sample of 140 people from this conference population. Within your sample, you actually discover that 67 people secretly prefer vanilla. So what is, what is your sample statistic or your sample proportion? Well, your sample size is 140. 67 of those people secretly prefer vanilla. So 67 out of 140, which is 0.479, is the proportion of people of your sample that secretly prefer vanilla. This is called your sample proportion, p hat, sometimes also called the sample statistic. It's based only on your sample rather than on the entire population. So in this particular example, my sample proportion is 0.479 which is 67 over 140. Now of the entire population of the 1,691 people at the conference, are we able to estimate using our sample proportion how many people at this conference actually prefer vanilla? Yes, we can take the entire population and multiply it by our sample proportion to estimate how many people at the entire conference actually prefer vanilla secretly, and that's 810 people. Now, this is not an absolute value. This is an estimate because this is based on our sample proportion. We're using our sample proportion to just get an estimate out of the population. Finally, if we actually were able to sample 300 people from our entire conference rather than 140, do you think that this higher sample would give us a more reliable estimate? The answer is yes, always. A higher sample is always going to provide a more reliable estimate of your population. Suppose you actually found out that 400 people out of the entire conference preferred vanilla. If you really knew the total number of people at the entire conference, then you would be able to get the population proportion for real. You wouldn't have to estimate it. You could take all the people that prefer vanilla, divide it by the entire population of the conference, and that is your population proportion. So some things to keep in mind here briefly. When we take a sample, whether it's a sample mean or a sample proportion, it's always just an estimate of the population parameter. Whatever we do with that sample and whatever inferences we make from that sample are always estimates. If we want, we can use that sample parameter to get a 95% confidence interval by calculating the margin of error. But if we happen to actually have information about the entire population, we don't have to estimate anymore and we can get the real population parameter. That's not usually the case, but when it is, it's nice. And this last example is an example of that. Thank you so much for joining me for this four-part presentation. I hope it helped.